Throughout history, people have gazed up at the night sky and wondered about our place in the universe. What else is out there? How did it all begin? Are there other planets like Earth? We are often left with more questions than answers, but the quest to understand our place in the universe has led to countless discoveries. Join us on this cosmic journey Brian Cox, what can the James Webb Space Telescope tell us about the universe? We have learned that the chemical elements of life were first produced in the first generation of stars after the Big Bang. We are here today because of them, and we want to better understand how that came to be. The ingredients in our bodies were assembled in the hearts of long dead stars over billions of years and have assembled themselves spontaneously into temporary structures that can think, feel, and explore. The carbon atoms in our bodies were made in stars because there was none of it at the Big Bang. There was only hydrogen and helium, so it was all made in stars. It's probably from different stars. The atoms in your body are not all from one star that cooked it and then died. There will be a mixture of stuff from many stars, and then those structures will decay away again at some point. In the very far future, there will be no structures left. So, here we are, existing in this little window when we can observe this magnificent universe. We don't know all the answers. We don't know where the laws of nature came from. We don't know why the universe began in the way that it did, if it indeed had a beginning. We don't know why that was so. We will probably find out at some point, and it will be something to do with the laws of nature. We understand nuclear physics. We can build nuclear reactors, for example, so we understand the physics of stars. We understand that the stars built the carbon and oxygen and we know how they did it. We can see it. If you look far out into the universe, you're looking way back in time. As you look back in time, you see less carbon and less oxygen. We have a direct observation that in the earliest universe, there wasn't any because we can see it. Now we see that there is some, and we know how it was made. While many questions have been answered, there are still so many mysteries left to unravel. The more powerful our tools for observing the universe got, the more surprises we found. As technology progresses and modern society becomes more reliant on information, scientists are ready for the next step. Recently, a revolutionary new telescope, called the James Webb Space Telescope, was successfully deployed into space. Scientists are excited because this gigantic instrument could look beyond two distant worlds around other stars and probe the mysterious structures and origins of our universe and our place in it. The Webb Telescope can look at light that's been stretched, much more stretched than Hubble. If you want to look far out into the universe, which means far back in time, then the further out you look, the further back in time you go and the more stretched the light. The Webb is able to look at the formation of the first stars and the first galaxies. It's much more sensitive to the light from the most distant objects in the universe. If you look at something from which the light has been traveling 13 billion years to reach us, you're looking at things as they were in the first billion years in the life of the universe. The web is going to look at the formation of the first stars and galaxies. It's also powerful enough to look at exoplanets, planets around different stars. The web is going to be able to look at planets, we've discovered around distant stars and tell us whether the atmosphere has water vapor in it or if it has oxygen in the atmosphere. The Webb is tremendously exciting. The James Webb Space Telescope is the largest and most powerful space science telescope ever built. This colossal telescope will allow us to see deep into space as never before. It has an unprecedented ability to detect light from stars in galaxies billions of light years away. Webb launched on December 25, 2021, on an Ariane 5 rocket from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana on the northeastern coast of South America. On January 8, 2022, the Webb team fully deployed the telescope's 21-foot gold-coated primary mirror, 
successfully completing the final stage of all major spacecraft deployments to prepare for science operations. Webb will float about a million miles away from Earth at a special location called L2, a unique location that will give it a wide view of the cosmos and keep the telescope's optics and scientific instruments cold enough to function and perform optimal science. As the Earth orbits the Sun, Webb will orbit with it, but stay fixed in the same spot with relation to the Earth and the Sun. How does the James Webb Space Telescope compare to the Hubble Space Telescope? Webb often gets called the replacement for Hubble, but scientists prefer to call it a successor. Webb will primarily look for the universe in the infrared, while Hubble studies it primarily at optical and ultraviolet wavelengths, though it has some infrared capability. The Webb telescope can do things that the Hubble can't do at all. The Hubble observes at ultraviolet wavelengths, visible wavelengths, and just a little bit of the infrared. The Webb telescope starts with red wavelengths and goes all the way out to 28 microns, which is much longer and shows us new things. We've never been able to see that well at those longer wavelengths. We did have telescopes in space that could pick up these longer wavelengths, but they're done. The Spitzer Space Telescope is too far away now for us to talk to it. So, this is it. This is the great next step for astronomy. Webb also has a much bigger mirror than Hubble. The larger light collecting area means that Webb can peer farther back into time than Hubble is capable of doing. Webb will directly observe a part of space and time never seen before. It will gaze into the epoch when the very first stars and galaxies formed over 13.5 billion years ago. Light doesn't travel particularly fast over cosmological distances 186,000 miles a second. That means that as you look out to even nearby objects, like the closest object you can see with the naked eye, the Andromeda Galaxy, which is about 2 million light years away, you see it as it was 2 million years in the past. You look at more distant galaxies, 10 million light years away, 10 million years in the past and so on. You could ask the question, are there objects so distant that the light traveling from them began its journey close to the Big Bang itself? The answer is yes. That light was first detected in the 1960s, and it's called the cosmic microwave background radiation. Essentially, the idea is how far can I look? In every direction you can look about 13.8 billion years into the past, back to the origin of the universe. We can't see further back than that because, in earlier times, the universe was so hot and so dense that it was in the form of what's known as a plasma. The atoms couldn't form because the temperature was too high, so you had electrons and primarily electrically charged protons and helium nuclei buzzing around in a thick soup opaque to light. At that moment, almost 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe is expanding and cooling. It becomes cool enough for atoms to form and becomes transparent almost in a moment. The light can journey across the universe ever since from that point, and that's what we call the cosmic microwave background. We can detect it today. Ultraviolet and visible light emitted by the very first luminous objects have been stretched or redshifted by the universe's continual expansion and arrive today as infrared light. Webb is able to see this infrared light with unprecedented resolution and sensitivity. We don't know exactly when the universe made the first stars and galaxies. The JWST is built to help scientists answer that. It will have new and powerful capabilities, enabling it to detect the light from the first galaxies in the universe. It will also be able to peer through dusty regions of space where stars and planetary systems are forming today. Webb will also observe exoplanets located in the star's habitable zones, the regions where a planet could harbor liquid water on its surface, and can determine if and where signatures of habitability may be present. Using a technique called transmission spectroscopy, the observatory will examine starlight filtered through planetary atmospheres 
to learn about their chemical compositions. When we look for exoplanets, scientists often use the words we know best as reference, our own and our neighbors in the solar system. But most planets out there aren't quite like any of our neighbors. Many of our telescope's early observations will target hot Jupiters, a class of planets we don't see in our solar system. Soon, other space telescopes will be built from the start with the specific mission of detecting biosignatures on Earth-like alien worlds. From a cosmological sense, it may be that the Earth is the only place in this galaxy where people like us can think about science and do cosmology. Even if that's not the case, it is true to say that we've looked a little bit and found nothing. It's often referred to as the Great Silence. I would argue that one of the profound messages that cosmology and biology together give us is that we may as well proceed on that basis. If we proceed on the basis that perhaps we're the only civilization currently present in the galaxy, we can further our understanding of the universe. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Tell us your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries signing off.